Energy is a central concept found throughout many disciplines of science. In physics, we care specifically about the transfer of energy within and between systems. This transformation of energy from one form to another allows work to be done. To begin our understanding of energy, we must be familiar with its different forms. Those forms are kinetic, gravitational potential, electric slash magnetic, chemical, nuclear, elastic potential, thermal, also known as heat, mass, vibration, also known as sound, and light. These are the most common forms we encounter in our study of physics. The table provides the ways in which these forms of energy may be found. The transformation of these forms causes effects. For example, consider a person running. The person is considered to have kinetic energy because the person is moving. However, where did the energy to move that person come from? The person is using the chemical energy from previously consumed food as a source of energy for their movement. Then where does the food get its energy from? Food sources like plants use the energy from light and the process of photosynthesis to generate the chemical energy that is then consumed by the human. Where then does the light energy from the sun come from? This is from the high speed collisions that happen in our sun that convert the mass of atoms into photons of light. In this simple action of running, the transformation of the energy necessary to carry out this process has been transformed into a multitude of forms. The principle of conservation of energy states that energy cannot be created or destroyed. This is an extremely important underlying principle of our universe because it means that energy is only being transformed into different forms. In some cases, energy can be transformed into forms that are not useful, such as the loss of energy due to heat in different processes, but importantly, that energy is not destroyed, just transformed into a non-useful form. When energy is transferred, it has the potential to do work. Work is the application of a force over a distance. Consider the movement of a water wheel that is placed in a moving river. The water has kinetic energy, and as it moves, it makes contact with the blades of the water wheel. That contact applies a force over a distance to the blade, thus causing the blade to move, causing the blade to gain kinetic energy. This force applied to the blade by the water is the work done on the blade by the water. It is also how much energy that has been transferred to the blade. The greater that amount of work done, which again would be the force from the water, the greater the amount of kinetic energy gained by the blade and thus a faster moving water wheel. The amount of work done can be calculated by multiplying the force applied, F, times the distance traveled in the direction of the force, S. For situations where the force applied is at an angle relative to the direction traveled by the object, the cosine of the angle theta, which is the angle between the vector for the force applied and the direction of the motion must be accounted for when calculating force. This results in an equation of work is equal to the force applied times the distance s times the cosine of theta. Not all conditions lead to a constant force being applied. For instance, in the case of a windmill, the force from the air is not always constant. Therefore, the amount of work done on the windmill is not always constant. A force distance graph can be used to estimate the work done by finding the area under the curve. This may involve using geometric equations like the areas of rectangles and triangles or making counting estimates for force distance graphs that have curves. Power is the rate of doing work. Lots of power means that lots of work is being done in a short period of time. An example of this might be lifting a bucket from a well. The force from the rope on the bucket over the distance of the well is the work being done. The energy conversion is the kinetic energy of the moving bucket being converted to gravitational potential energy as it increases its height from its original position. Where power fits into this situation is how quickly at which that conversion from kinetic to gravitational potential energy occurs. The bucket making that same journey in a shorter period of time means there is a greater amount of power output. This is due to the same amount of work being done, but it takes a shorter period of time to complete the work.
When any object is in motion, we consider it to have kinetic energy. As the speed of an object increases, so does the amount of kinetic energy it has. Consider the situation of pushing on a box. In this case, we will ignore friction. The work done on the box will be converted to kinetic energy. To calculate the kinetic energy of an object that has an initial velocity of 0 meters per second, it is one half the mass of the object times its velocity squared. This equation slightly changes if the object is already in motion. The change in velocity will solve for the change in kinetic energy. Therefore, for objects that are moving, the equation is one half the mass of the object times the quantity of the final velocity squared minus the initial velocity squared. Objects under the influence of gravitational field have gravitational potential energy. The amount of gravitational potential energy is dependent on the gravitational field strength, the mass of the object, and the vertical position. If we consider lifting a ball, the work done to lift that object is, of course, the force times the distance. In the case of vertical distance, we refer to this as the height. The force that is exerted vertically on the ball is the force of gravity, which is the mass of the object times the gravitational force constant. On Earth, this value is g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. Importantly, this equation shows that as an object increases its height, the amount of gravitational potential energy increases as well. Forces are conservative or non-conservative. In the case of gravity, this is a conservative force, which means as a ball is raised and then lowered, the amount of work done on that ball is conserved and the route taken to reach a different height does not matter. Only the height at which the object reaches matters. Take for instance a ball with a mass of 5 kilograms is raised to a height of 2 meters in a vertical path. The value of its change in gravitational potential energy is 98 joules. Now take the same ball and raise to the same height of 2 meters, but this time at an angle of 30 degrees, and then calculate the gravitational potential energy at a height of 2 meters, and the result is the same of 98 joules. In this way, the path to get to the 2 meter height does not make a difference in the gain in potential energy of the ball. This is not true, however, for forces like friction, which are considered to be non-conservative. Non-conservative forces require the path to be known to calculate the total energy conserved. Take for instance a box that is pushed with a constant force and the frictional force of 50 newtons is applied to the box. If the box moves in a straight horizontal line a distance of 1 meter, the work done on that box by the frictional force is 50 joules. However, if that same force of friction is applied to the box and the box travels a distance of 1 meter to the right and then 2 meters back to the left, the distance traveled would be 3 meters total. The total work done by the force of friction is 150 joules. This shows that in the case of some forces, the distance traveled plays a large factor in the amount of transferred energy. Mechanical energy is the sum of kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. Consider the case of a ball rolling down a curved ramp. As the ball is falling down the ramp, its energy is being converted from gravitational potential energy to kinetic energy. However, the sum of the energy does not change. Importantly, the mechanical energy stays the same within the system, even as the energy is converted from gravitational potential energy to kinetic energy. Using mechanical energy to evaluate objects is helpful in situations where the acceleration is not constant and therefore the use of kinematic equations is not appropriate. Hooke's law shows that the force from an elastic object like a spring is equal to one-half the spring constant k times the stretched or compressed distance of the object. Since these objects produce a force, it is also considered to store energy. This energy is referred to as elastic potential energy. To solve for the elastic potential energy, we take one-half the spring constant times the distance the spring is stretched or compressed squared.
energy is not always converted into useful purposes. Some energy is lost in forms like heat and vibration. Efficiency is a measure of how much of the input energy is converted to useful energy. To make this calculation, divide the amount of useful energy out by the total energy input. This calculation also applies to power efficiency as well. The higher the efficiency value, the more energy that is converted to a useful form. Importantly, the efficiency value should not exceed 1. An efficiency greater than 1 would mean that the process you are evaluating is creating energy, which violates the principle of conservation of energy which we have previously covered. To help visualize the transformation of energy in a system or through a process, Sankey diagrams are a model that shows the flow of energy. There are a few rules to be aware of when using Sankey diagrams. One, each energy is represented by an arrow. Two, the diagram is drawn to scale with the width of the arrow being proportional to the amount of energy transfer it represents. A wider arrow represents more energy, a skinnier arrow represents less energy. Three, the energy flow is drawn left to right. Four, when energy is lost from the system, it moves to the top or bottom of the diagram. This shows that the energy is now in a non-useful state that is referred to as degraded energy. And lastly, five, the Sankey diagram can be used for power as well as energy.